Knockouts are perhaps the most definitive way to win a boxing match and become the fan's favorite. But perhaps nothing is as dramatic, thrilling, and compelling as when the knockout happens in the first round. The excitement of the moment soon becomes a memory that the fans remember for a long time. So in this video, we're going to recall some of the most memorable first round knockouts in the history of boxing's glamorous heavyweight division. On September 1, 1973, George Foreman made the first defense of his heavyweight title against Puerto Rican challenger Jose Roma. Foreman was established as one of the most devastating punchers in the heavyweight division at the time, while Roman was not regarded as a top contender. Nevertheless, Roman made history as the first Puerto Rican to challenge for a major heavyweight title. During the ring instruction, Roman stuck his tongue out to taunt Foreman, but the latter maintained his composure. However, once the opening bell rang, Foreman came out firing powerful punches that put Roman down. Roman was able to get back up, but Foreman continued with the assault, sending the challenger to the canvas for the second time with a big right hand. Roman again got back to his feet, but he was taken out by a brutal right uppercut. The right uppercut did the job. I don't think he's going to make it, friends. Where is it? That's it. It was as predicted, Len. A lot of heart. He tried to stay away. A 17-foot ring. And George Foreman just cut him. On December 12, 1986, James Bone Crusher Smith faced Tim Witherspoon in a rematch for the WBA heavyweight title. Witherspoon was scheduled to face ex-champion Tony Tubbs in a rematch, but he pulled out and Smith was brought in as a replacement on short notice. In his first meeting with Smith in 1985, Witherspoon won via decision and was the clear favorite to win the rematch. But Smith came out swinging from the opening bell, throwing power punches with the intention of stopping the fight early. Bone crush just jumped right at uh, Tim and put him in a little trouble early. He's really coming up and he's really giving him some good shots there. But that's that really dazed him. In fact, Tim was just retreating now, not throwing back any punches. It was the first punch of the fight that was a big right hand. It was and a good Witherspoon is hanging on. It was a good move by uh, Bone Crusher. That's a slip. That's a slip. Now what he needs to do, Barry, is to stay there. He needs with barely a minute gone in the opening round, Smith caught Witherspoon with a left hook that almost sent him through the ropes. And down goes. Witherspoon got up on wobbly legs while Smith continued with the assault, sending the champion to the canvas with another right hand. Smith swarms over him. Another right hand, Witherspoon's down again. Ooh. Witherspoon again got back to his feet, but Smith stopped him with a big right hand and with the three knockdown rule in place, the fight was stopped immediately. Witherspoon still in trouble. Down he goes again, and now the it's fight. over. Rivera stops the fight. The fight is over. A monumental ball question knew that Tim Witherspoon was not warmed up. He raced across the ring and landed a beautiful right hand that put Tim down. It was a good move on ball question's fifth part. And it looked as though Witherspoon was going to be able to weather that one. He kind of got his legs back under him, but then right back came Witherspoon, or came Smith, rather. Well, it seemed as though Witherspoon had regrouped and got himself together. That left hook there, again, put him in serious trouble. Well, one thing about a bone crusher Smith, not only shocked himself probably, but shocked the entire boxing world with the stoppage of Tim Witherspoon. Bone Crusher was the guy who came in here, as we said, for 13 nine. On July 21, 1989, undisputed and undefeated champion Mike Tyson defended his title against Carl Williams. Both fighters came out firing from the opening bell, with Williams showing no sign of fear for the champion. Our referee Randy Newman says, uh-uh, we're not going to start that way. This is somewhat of a reunion here. 
because both men are just throwing punches. In fact, wins here has selected to fight Tyson inside. He claims the other However, midway into the fight, Williams attempted to throw a jab, but Tyson responded with a counter left hook that sent the challenger to the canvas. <laughs> Williams found his feet, but the referee deemed him unfit to continue. On June 28, 1988, Mike Tyson defended his undisputed heavyweight title against fellow undefeated boxer Michael Spinks. Tyson held the WBA, WBC, and IBF titles, but Spinks was considered the lineal champion. Tyson went after the challenger from the opening bell, throwing heavy shots. Tyson attacks immediately, cuts off the ring off so far with a jab, he tries to come back at him. But Tyson walks right through it. Tyson showing no fear, no respect at all. With barely a minute into the fight, Spinks was backed against the ropes, where Tyson caught him with a left uppercut and a right to the body that forced him to take a knee. But he's taking them. The uppercut. Body shot. Down goes. Mike Spinks. Spinks got back to his feet, but Tyson immediately went to work, unloading another left-right combination that put Spinks on the canvas under the bottom ropes. He leaves with the right hand. Down he goes. I don't think you'll get up from this. Mike Spinks is laying flat on his back. The count is up to five. And six. And seven. And eight. Spinks attempted to get back to his feet, but instead stumbled and almost fell out of the ring. Tyson had made an ultimate statement in 91 seconds. Mike Tyson. Unbelievable strike. It came in the first round. And the timer tells me 131 of the first round. One of the fastest knockouts in heavyweight history. It came at 131 of the first round. Mike Spinks was. On September 25th, 1962, Sonny Liston challenged the world heavyweight champion Floyd Patterson for his title. Although Patterson's team had done everything possible to keep Patterson away from the menacing Liston, Patterson agreed to fight the mandatory challenger. Despite being the champion, Patterson came into the fight as the underdog. Liston was bigger, more powerful, and had a 13-inch reach advantage, which he used to keep Patterson away. With barely a minute left in the opening round, Liston connected with a left hook followed by a grazing right and another left hook that dropped the champion on the canvas. A left to grazing right and a solid left to the cheekbone dropped the champion. Ten months after becoming the world heavyweight champion, Liston's first defense of the title was against Patterson in a rematch. Patterson wanted a chance to redeem himself as he believed that he was caught with a lucky punch during the first meeting. However, less than a minute into the fight, Liston was all over Patterson, landing punches after punches to the head before a final right hand sent the challenger to the canvas. Trying to get underneath the champion straight punches, runs into a right uppercut, which sets up the challenger. Patterson got back to his feet immediately and tried to fight back, but Liston sent him to the canvas for a second time. Jim, but Liston's countering left hook is on target and sets up the second knockdown. Again, Patterson bravely climbed back to his feet, but Liston stunned him with a big left hand to the body followed by a combination that ended with a short left hook. Two 
jarring right hands are followed by the knockout blow, the left uppercut. This rematch was only four seconds longer than the first bout. Liston receives the congratulations to the victor. On May 25, 1965, Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston had a rematch for the World Heavyweight title. Liston had earlier lost the title to Ali, then known as Cassius Clay, in one of the biggest upsets in boxing history. When the two fighters met in 1964, Ali won via technical knockout in six rounds after Liston failed to answer the bell for the seventh round. In their rematch, the bout ended abruptly after Ali landed a quick short punch to the temple. Liston went down to the canvas, rolled over, got to his knee, and then fell on his back again. Did you see the punch? Did you see? By the ABC clock, 1 minute 53 seconds was 10 seconds after. This bout remains one of the most controversial in boxing history. Still has reflexes, look at him duck. Now Walcott has gotten information that Liston was down for a count of 10 and more. And so the fight is over and Muhammad Ali is still the champion in a scene of bedlam, chaos. What was the punch that won it for you? You're a real champion at this point. Well, uh, the punch won the fight for me. Uh, well, I believe it was a left hook or a right cross. And one of the two. I really can't think because I was moving too fast. A left hook or a right cross? Did you think you were going to be able to do it in the first round? You did it in six rounds last well, time, Steve, Judges. Well, did not tell the world that I had a surprise. And that if I told you the surprise, you would not come to the fight. Just that time you saw the blow cleanly. On May 15, 1953, Rocky Marciano defended his world heavyweight title against Jersey Joe Walcott in a rematch. In their first meeting, Walcott had dominated the fight and was ahead on the scorecards before he was suddenly knocked out in the 13th round. But the rematch didn't last as long. With only a minute left in the opening round, Marciano caught Walcott with a counter left hook, followed by a right uppercut that sent him sprawling on his back. On June 22, 1938, Joe Lewis and Max Schmeling met for a rematch for the World Heavyweight title. Schmeling was the first boxer to defeat the Brown Bomber, and Lewis was out for revenge. However, the fight was a year before the start of World War II, and Schmeling was seen as the face of Nazi Germany, while Lewis represented the American people. Because of this, this fight became one of the most anticipated bouts in the history of boxing. From the opening bell, Lewis opened fire and started landing clean shots. Joe Lewis all over Max Schmeling here in round one. Moments later, Lewis dropped Schmeling with a right hand to the jaw. A dynamite right to the jaw and Schmeling goes down here in the first... He got back to his feet, but Lewis dropped Schmeling two more times before his corner threw in the towel. By the brown bomber, Sin Schmeling down again. A crushing right explodes off Schmeling's jaw and Max goes down for the third time. It doesn't look like Schmeling... Joe wants to finish it here in round one. An explosive right sends Schmeling to the canvas for the first time. Another right to the jaw, and Schmeling is in desperate trouble. 
Max goes down for the second jump. Now it's Joe Lewis, the Brown Bomber at his dynamite best. A right to the body. Another jolting right, and Max goes down for the third and last time. It's all... Which of these fights is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching.